appreciate you guys coming out here today before I get started, um, or before I open it up to you guys, just want to say a couple words. Um, first of all, um, sad day for the NBA with Dakimbe passing um, this morning, obviously. He was a global ambassador for our game, obviously a hell of a player when he played, but um, you know, since he's finished playing, been a, a great ambassador. For the for the NBA and the, and the game of basketball around the world, so we will we will miss him and thoughts and prayers go out to his family and obviously all the organizations that he's been a part of and made an incredible impact on this game and um, you know while he played and and, and post career as well. So just want to say those things. Um, look, we've had a a great last month um, here in Detroit. Uh, with our players and our staff. Um, we've had an incredible turnout. I've been very happy with and pleased with uh, the amount of effort that our guys have put in on the court and doing some things off the court together as well. I think we have a really good group. Um, they like each other. Uh, they've competed on the court. They've worked hard on the court. I think JB and his staff have done a, a tremendous job of getting these guys early buy-in and positivity in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the facility and on the court as well. Um, the energy has been high, and uh, as I said, guys seem to really like each other, which I think goes, um, I think a lot of people miss the boat on that, and they think it's just a small thing, but we spend a lot of time together, um, not only as staff, but players, they spend a bunch of time, so the more that these guys like each other, the more positive the environment is um, every day, and it's a long season, so the fact that these guys uh, are getting along is a good thing. Um, I think uh, you know going into tomorrow, our, our team is is healthy. Everybody will be available for practice tomorrow, um, and everyone except Asar. And I just want to kind of allude to him real quick before we get going. Answer some questions that you might have. Um, he's going through a medical process with the league and the players' association right now. I think some of you guys are aware of. Um, obviously, we're supporting him as much as possible and just waiting for the resolution. Um, from from the from the NBA and and the PA, um, we are uh, we're excited and look forward to having a having a SAR back. But at this time, I just can't say any more to that as we're just looking for the uh, a resolution to that process. So, he's uh, he's been working hard every day. This process has been going on for about a week. Um, he's allowed to do conditioning. He's allowed to do strength training. Um, a lot of non-contact drills, but that's pretty much. Um, what he can do right now until they make a decision. So that is where we are with our team, and I'll just I'll open it up to you guys. Uh, uh, Trajan, thanks for doing this. Uh, just now that you have a moment to sit with the roster and other moves this offseason, what excites you most about the team going into uh, the first day of camp? Yeah, I think we have a young team. I think it's nine or 10 guys that are 25 and under on the roster. So um, <clears throat> these guys have really worked hard since the summer league and coming in. So I think the blend of um, young guys and vets and excited to see how that works out. Um, and I think you obviously have a vision in the summer when you put the roster together. And how does that play out as camp comes and with the five exhibition games and then obviously the week before, uh, the week that we'll have in between the last exhibition and the uh, our first game to really iron out where we're at and put those rotations together. So. Excited to see the blend of, of basketball players, but also the blend of young men that we have. Yeah, I think you mentioned <coughs> earlier that one of your concerns was how it could hurt the, the psyche of the young guys to get the endorsed, for the lack of a better word, without a song on this year. Mm -hmm. You've got like basically you can split this game into two groups. All those young guys who were here last year, and then like four veterans who come from winning organizations. And I'm guessing some of the appeal of those vets were the, just that—that that they come from winning organizations. But are you concerned about? A, the psyche of those guys from last year and what happens when adversity strikes this year, and then B, those veterans that are that are transitioning from going coming from championship organizations to a rebuilding team. Yeah. Um, yeah, we thought about that a lot when putting this roster together, and I think we've been intentional about the discussions. And I know JB has been intentional about the discussions that he's had with, with the whole team, with young guys and with the vets as well. But we brought those guys in for exactly that reason. Um, to kind of show, to help bolster not only the playing on the floor, but also it's a long season, um, kind of help the ups and downs and keep these guys as even killed as possible. And if and when we go through a losing streak, not to think back of what happened last year, but to 
you know, what's next? Um, move on to the next play, move on to the next practice, move on to the next game. Don't, don't worry about the last play or the last game or what we did or didn't do. Uh, it's what's next is what's important. So I think bringing in those veterans are important, but I think obviously, I think also the positivity and the space that we're trying to build in the environment of, of what's next as well and, and looking long-term and, and not looking at every game, but looking at, at process and looking at these guys developing and becoming the best versions of themselves. So not being as granular as to one player, one game, but whether it's five, 10 game segments or half a season trying to determine how these guys are getting better and growing will be important for us. With that being said, as you're trying to establish a foundation, you know, this first year is really important. What would you say is realistic, a realistic goal for you that you would like to see the season over? Not, not maybe a win total or anything, yeah. but just what's a realistic goal that you want to do in this first season? Yeah, I don't think the goal for us is wins and losses. Obviously, we <clears throat> we want to win as many games as possible, but I think it's putting a group together that establishes a Detroit Pistons identity. And at some time of the season, uh, we want to be able to say, and JB has reiterated this to our guys, that this is Detroit Pistons basketball. And we walk into arena, the other team's going to know exactly what we're going to bring. And they better be ready for it, because we're going to come in and compete every night. So I think um, that's going to be incredibly important for our group, is just the, the compete level that we have every day. And then, we get, like I said, we have a lot of young guys. So getting a routine, instilling a process with our team, um, and creating an environment, again, and, and sustaining that environment that we're creating positivity of work and compete level. Um, and that's not something that happens overnight. So for us, is doing those things across the course of the season. Of course, myself and my staff will be assessing our players um, the whole time. But obviously, not only assessing what they're doing, but how, how can we help them get better? So for us, it's just continuing to build and hopefully be a better team in December than we are now and a better team in March and April than we were in December. And a quick follow-up to that. Um, I saw you out at the you know, Lions training camp and Stock X event. You know, you've, you've been integrated in Detroit right away, you know, coming in. So have you leaned on any of those other general managers, like maybe Brad Holmes or any of those guys who are going through what you're going through as well, just kind of see what their process was or how did they deal with the foundation? Or what do you plan on even doing that? I definitely plan on doing it. I think initially it was just going and reaching out and establishing or an initial relationship and contact with these guys. But I do understand they're in the course of their season. They're right in the heat of it. So um, I really enjoyed speaking with Brad that day. He, he took about 30, 45 minutes out of his time, which I think was incredibly kind of him. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch and continue the rapport. But I also know, you know where he is at in the season and, and uh, hope to stay in touch on both sides of his season when he finishes up there, then come over here um, and then grow from each other. But uh, he's done some amazing things here that hopefully I can learn from. Yeah. Kind of piggybacking off of that, just seeing the success that the Lions are having, seeing what the Tigers are doing right now, how much motivation does that give you and possibly JB for what you guys are trying to develop and establish here, you know, change the culture and the identity of this team? I think we've said it a couple times that Detroit is just is a huge sports town. They want to get behind uh, their teams. Um, teams that are winning or teams that are losing. So for us, it's establishing a foundation and putting together a team, put a team on the floor that this city is proud of. Uh, and I think that's guys that are hard-nosed, gritty, and they compete every night. So that's going to be our focus. Uh, and hopefully the wins and losses take care of themselves in time. But we're, we're going to hold our guys accountable to that right now, building a, an identity of Detroit Pistons basketball. Uh, and hopefully we can get to the success that these other teams are having. And there is optimism, um, you know, with the hiring as well as the offseason here. But what's the message to the fans that have seen prior attempts as to why this one would be uh, different? I think we're going to try to be systematic and, and, like I said, intentional about um, the young men that we bring in, um, how we go about um, developing them, how we go about putting together a roster. Um, and I think it's just developing an identity and, and just a um, this is what we do every day and if we're not going to do that then we're going to find people that are uh, and just a high high compete level every day in practice and in games so what the fans come to expect is what they're going to see every game which is um, a team that represents uh, the city of Detroit uh, the Pistons organization and all the fans to the highest level and they're accountable to one another uh, of, of what they expect every game coming in and I think that's if I had to say one thing to fans to expect is uh, I think JB is really high on that as well and he's going to reiterate that later is that's the biggest expectation for our guys individually and, and as a team. Along those same lines, how much would you guys rely on the veterans that you guys brought in in order to continue on giving out the message of you know, trying to establish that identity and everything that's in between? 
Yeah, JB has communicated to them. I've communicated to them as well as, as the leadership piece for those guys is, is going to be huge for us as a team and, and also for creating these habits with the young guys that we have. Um, a lot of our guys here, returners, have never haven't seen winning at a high level. They haven't seen playing for something past the all-star break, which is obviously when the whole league ramps up. So that's a different level of basketball, um, let alone when you get into the playoffs. So I think those are some of the things that our vets can share uh, with them. But to get there, you have to have certain processes and habits that go along with that. It doesn't just happen. So I, we're, we're all hoping that um, they can be leaders in the locker room, be leaders in the court, um, be leaders as we travel um, and leaders in, a lot, in the fourth quarter of games that can help show these guys the way it's done. What is it about Tobias Harris that made him a big priority, priority for the team this summer? I think most important is he wanted to be here, right? So once he said he wanted to be here, that was huge for us. But again, he's a guy that's been impeccable in terms of his habits, in terms of his professionalism. He's played in the playoffs on multiple teams. Um, he does it the right way all the time. He's in the community. Uh, he's, he's done an incredible job about building a brand, and when I say that, you, you know who Tobias Harris is in and out between the lines and off the court in his community. So you know what to expect from Tobias every day, um, whether we're traveling on the road, whether we're on the court. And uh, he came here because he wants to be a leader as well. I think it's going to be um, one of the first times when he'll have the opportunity to truly be one of the, the leaders. I think he and Cade will be the leaders of this team, um, and that's what he wants to do. And he's stepping in those shoes, and he has big, you know, we have big expectations from him from that standpoint. With Cade having his uh, long term security now, what do you look for from him? What does success look like for Cade this year? Good question. Uh, I'd love to hear what he says later, too, when you ask him that question. But uh, I, I think it's growing into a leader. He wants to lead. Uh, I think that was a big thing for him. And, and look, we're fortunate that he wants to be here as well. Um, you know, a young man of his caliber, uh, both playing and as a young man, high character, he embodies what we want to be as a franchise. Um, and so I think the, the re-signing of him, we're all very, very uh, excited about. But kind of, again, seeing him progress every day in terms of his leadership, but also his, his compete level, both sides of the floor, and, and then playing winning basketball and figuring out what that means night in and night out, because uh, hopefully we can stay in games. So I think that's the only way that you grow and you figure out how to win games is you stay in them. You'll lose some tough ones, but then over time you figure out how to win them, and then you just build, you build on that. So um, he's going to be a leader for us on and off the floor, so that's what I look at uh, for as a year of success for him because he's a hell of a basketball player. So um, that, that, I wouldn't say that comes easy, but he's so talented that he's going to figure it out on the court. It's what are the habits, what is his leadership style, and how can that get better as, as the year goes on. Trajan, Tom uh, Gores talked about leaning on you as like the leader of building this franchise and uh, putting things together. What has this process been like for you stepping into this role in your first season? Um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it was obviously very hectic and stressful initially, as I've alluded to a good amount in the first 45, 60 days. But um, I've been blessed to bring uh, some really good people with me staff-wise, and obviously JB and his staff have been incredible since they've entered. And I think it helps a lot when you have a group of young men like we have that want to be here and are excited about this season. But um, just piggyback on what you're saying, um, Tom has been incredible in terms of his support and with the resources like without him and me going to get the people that we've got, um, we wouldn't be in the position that I think we are. We've got a long ways to go, um, but I think we've really worked hard and put ourselves in a pretty good position um, in terms of creating an establishing environment um, to uh, allow these guys to be the best versions of themselves. So again, we'll see once game one, game 10, game 20 comes. That's the test of the environment that you're trying to build, but I think we're in a good place right now. This roster lacks, I guess, this roster lacks a tradition of veteran point guard. What does that mean for Jaden Ivey, and just what do you hope for him next season as, as he steps into year three? Uh, he's been an incredibly bright spot for us and over the past month, just his dedication and willingness to come in and work. Uh, and I mean pre-practice, in between the lines, post-practice in the weight room, recovery, whatever he needs, he's been all over it. He's probably been our guy that's been whether you saw the most diligent, the most disciplined, he's been working his butt off. He's been uh, really excited. I think he's also been the one that we've had to pull back a little bit um, in terms of overworking. Um, but 
he's somebody that I'm really intrigued to see uh, how JB is going to use him because uh, I think he can be used in a lot of different capacities, running a unit, playing side by side with Cade, playing on, playing off the ball, um, has the ability to be an elite defender. Um, obviously, everybody knows to be an elite defender, you got to want to do it yourself. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but he does have the ability to impact both sides of the ball at a high level. Um, and we're excited to see. Uh, we're excited to see that from day one. Thanks, Trajan. Right. Thank you. Thank you.